I know there's been a lot, a lot of discussion about, oh, well, it's the offensive coordinator. Oh, well, it's the head coach. Iberflus has to go. I hear all of these different things, but nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody is putting the blame on the one person who deserves it most, and that's Kayla Williams. Kayla Williams deserves so much blame on the way he's been playing in these games, not only up until this point, but definitely in this game against the New England Patriots that's opened everyone's eyes to how bad it's really gotten in Chicago. Because Kayla Williams, bro. You're missing open throws. You can't connect seven-yard out routes. You can't connect on swing passes. You can't connect on slants. You can't connect on deep routes. What are we doing? You're overthrowing them. You're throwing it out of their range. You're missing them completely. You're not even throwing it to them at all. You're taking a sack. Like, it's it, it's bad, man. It, it, it never looked so ugly. I never witnessed. I never witnessed such a poor game of football in my life in person. Genuinely speaking. I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm so I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm not saying this to try and get laughs, likes, nothing. I just genuinely never ever witnessed a poor game of football to the extent of watching the Chicago Bears play offense in my life ever. I've watched a lot of football in my life. I watched a lot of football in person, but the way that offense with the Chicago Bears ran was just nasty. That did not belong on national television. That did not belong to be seen by millions of fans and thousands of fans all across the world. That was awful. Yes, it is on the offensive coordinator. Yes, it is on the head coach Ibraflis. Those guys are bad at what they've been doing too. But damn it, Caleb Williams got sacked nine times. Now, all nine of those sacks was not on the offensive line. I sat there and watched. I, I intentionally stayed all the way through that poor game of the Chicago Bears offense to just pick it apart. I just wanted to pick it apart just to talk to you in this specific time. He was sacked nine times. He overlooked multiple receivers. I see why DJ Moore is so frustrated. I'd be frustrated as hell if my quarterback couldn't find me when I'm open either. It's ridiculous. He looked very stressed in the pocket, very panicky in the pocket. And to me, when I'm looking at him in the pocket and seeing how bad he's playing and seeing how he's missing open throws, can't connect to his receivers, even when they're point blank range wide open. To me, I just can't help but to think they have officially broken Caleb Williams. The Chicago Bears have broken Caleb Williams the same way they did with Justin Fields, the same way they did with, with multiple quarterbacks in the past. They have officially broken Caleb Williams. It's sad. It's messed up. It's not cool because, you know, they, they got so many weapons there. We all thought, oh, the Bears, you got to watch out for them. You got to watch out for the Bears. <laughs> but, but that's not the case. This team, all the weapons they have can't amount to anything. They can't do anything. I think that the timing of this offense is all out of whack. I think the timing of Caleb Williams trying to get it to his receivers is out of whack. And this it's not pretty to watch. It's, and it's awful. It's awful. It's awful football total of what we're watching from the Chicago Bears offense. The defense, they're doing their part. They're living up to the hype of what we expected out of the Chicago Bears. But damn it, the defense cannot do it all on their own. They limited the, 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 the New England Patriots to 19 total points. They had an interception. They only gave up one touchdown. Damn it, they were doing all they could to keep the Bears in this game and keep the game close. But the Bears, you if you can't score the ball, you're not going to win. <laughs> it's that simple. And right now, when I'm witnessing from the Bears, they could not score the ball, and it just looks like they will not win ball games. Because newsflash. I hate that I just said that. Newsflash, buddy. The Bears' schedule don't get any easier. It don't get any easier. This was a gimme. This was a game you needed to win against the New England Patriots. That was a game that was going to help you. But the game, it gets no easier. You got Green Bay next week, the Vikings, the Lions, 49ers, the Vikings again, and the Detroit Lions. Bro, the Bears are about to go on a nine-game losing streak. Let's see how many. <laughs> they're about to go on a huge losing streak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The Bears <laughs> will legitimately probably go on a nine-game losing streak. This is not me being funny. They just already lost three games straight. Now they got the Packers, Vikings, Lions, 49ers, Vikings, Lions, and Seahawks and Packers to finish the season. They're probably going to lose nine straight games, if not 11. 
and it's nothing they can do about it. They're going to get the top five pick again, but we'll see what they do with that. Ibra Flus is going to be gone. Uh, any Bears fans in panic mode right now, relax, bro. It's okay. Ibra Flus is going to be gone in two weeks. Just give it that time. He'll be gone. He'll be gone because they're going to they're going to continue to go on a losing streak. At the very most, Ibra Flus is going to be their head coach for the Chicago Bears. Maybe, maybe to the end of the season. But the Bears will be words I'm not going to use if they continue to keep him. They, they would it would it would be silly. It would be silly.